Now let's talk with Diana Eck. Diana, thank you for joining us today. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, it is a delight to have you and to talk about this fascinating subject of pluralism. I thought we might try to start in a, in a macro kind of way. You've been studying this for a long time. What has the effect of globalization had on this dialogue? over the years because we've certainly expanded mm -hmm. our world as we know it. We sure have. I mean, one of the things that globalization has meant is the migration of peoples from one part of the globe to another, and we've felt that in the United States. That's why we do have so many new people in the U.S., uh, relatively new, people who have come here in the last 40 years with the change of our immigration laws and also with uh, the tragedies and, uh, and yearnings of people in other parts of the world. So we do have our own... Uh, religious diversity, Muslims and Buddhists and Hindus and Sikhs and Jains, all of them right here. That's certainly one thing that's happened. The other is that globalization has meant the uh, rocket rapid communications revolution that means that we know so much more about people in other parts of the world and also they more about us and we can transmit our understandings as well as our prejudices over uh, a heartbeat. And that has made a real, I mean, that's both a gift and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, I, I was struck by your comment that, you know, on September the 11th, that day, there were these emails sent out by, by you know, various Muslims condemning the, the events of the day. And yet, we d it didn't get covered. And I had the same experience of reading those emails and then looking on the news for that. And There's there were nothing. so many people who were saying, uh, where is the, the voice of the Muslims who are outraged by this? Well, they were there, but not picked up. What do we do about that? Well, it's a difficult thing. I mean, you know, the, the media, as you know, if it bleeds, it leads. And there was a lot of violence and a lot of pain and suffering that people were experiencing. And there was just so much to hear, not just then, but in the months and really the years since then. We don't ordinarily send people out to find out how folks are cooperating with one another and, and uh, searching for understanding, although lo no, local news media do do this. And one of the things we've done at the Pluralism Project is try to create a news source called Religious Diversity News where we, we kind of go around and read local newspapers all over the country and uh, look for not only the ways in which uh, there might be a, a, a firebomb at a mm -hmm. local mosque or something, but the ways in which people have really developed new relationships with each other. And that is happening all over the country. It's just that we don't know enough about it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you, you mentioned about America's lack of, un Americans' lack of understanding with, with Islam and Muslim faith. Do you think this is a gener generational thing you're seeing? Are your students having a different understanding, a different openness to this than perhaps their parents or their grandparents? In Absolutely. The stage? You're so right. I mean, it is true. It, some of it's generational uh, because students come to my university these days and they're likely to have a Muslim roommate or mm -hmm. a Hindu have a Jewish roommate or something like that. There are so many people who have now hit college age and are really in uh, a very clear multi-religious context. And so whether they go to the trouble of really studying much about Islam, uh, that's another question. Although I must say that our classes in Arabic and is in Islamic studies are uh, booming and bigger than ever. But they do know people face to face. And so they're not likely to carry the prejudices of uh, another era into the future. So you're seeing that as a good sign? I then, see in it the, as in a very students. good sign. Right. And if we're looking at where the places of like interfaith activity are happening in the U.S., they are happening on our college campuses. In the last 10 years, this has been a growing phenomenon in college campuses. You know, don't you think so much of the key to this, though, is having real relationships with folks? I mean, I Absolutely. had the experience of taking courses on Islam, but getting to visit, you know, the mosque and ha meet colleagues there and, and building relationships and friendships, that's what changes life for me in my little village. It really does. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I really insist on with my own students is that we do, we don't treat Islam as if it's happening just in, in the Middle East or around the globe or somewhere else. It's part of our own community. And we do go to the mosque. We do go to the Hindu temple. We do the kind of things that the young man at the beginning of the program was yearning to do, to hit the road and find living faith, really. What are and the, it's so important to What do are the that. big surprises you've encountered? Well, I mean, <laughs> one of the things that one is surprised again and again is just at the enormous hospitality mm -hmm. of religious communities. 
And, uh, you know, my work and my researchers' work in the Pluralism Project has been a little bit like, uh, you know, calling up people you've never met and inviting yourself to dinner. You know, I'd like to come to the Gurdwara during this, uh, you know, festival or something like this. And of course you go and they are so welcoming and warm and they do have dinner also. <laughs> or um, to, to ask if you can come and be part of the community I mentioned at the, at the evening prayers during Ramadan. This was such a special time for the Muslim community in, in Boston. It's the only time that they, at the outset, that the mosque was open. So to be received there and able to participate, in a sense, in those prayerful, powerful evenings in Ramadan was really a gift. We could talk so much longer about this wonderful topic. Thank you for joining us today, Dana. We appreciate it. A great it. privilege to be here. Thank you very, sure. very much.